Pumpkin House has a history that's unexplainable. <laughs> it started actually in 1978. I carved four pumpkins for myself, my wife, and my then two children, and began each year to add a few at a time. They went up to 12, and the 48, 50, and finally we reached 120. And then when I moved, there was a break for a couple of years uh, when I was living above the pharmacy. And then when I moved to Beach Street into the Joseph Miller home, which is an, a historic home on the National Historic Registry. It was a home of Joseph Miller, a commissioner of the Internal Revenue Service and personal friend of President Grover Cleveland. I looked at the house and said, wow, just think how many pumpkins we can put on this old Victorian home. And it really got out of hand. We jumped to 500 and then to 1,000. For the year 2000, we went up to 2,000 pumpkins. And all the volunteers complained that it was overwhelming. So I didn't do 2,000 the next year. I did 3,000. And we've kind of stuck with that number, and they've quit complaining ever since. The, the first year I came here, my husband drove me by the house, and I was just, I thought, my goodness, look at that, you know. But to, to see how hard Mr. Griffith works for the display, uh, and the people who help him, um, not, only the, not only the volunteers who help carve pumpkins, but we have to have, there's electricians, there are carpenters, uh, there are people of various, you know, occupations, who are there to assist him with the displays to make sure that everything uh, works according to his plan. The pumpkin house is year round in many ways. I drive my children crazy with uh, getting ideas during the course of a year. We'll be out to eat somewhere and we'll look at some object and I'll say, hey, that could be a pumpkin. And they'll say, dad, please turn it off. It attracts people from everywhere. I mean, he's had people from other countries I think practically every state in the United States. And they see this, and a lot of people can't believe that, you know, Rick does all this and uh, the pumpkins, and there's no charge for any of it. You just come and look and enjoy it. And of course, it takes a big volunteer base to do that. It's, uh, it's a wonderful thing. I mean, the pumpkin house is uh, something that no other town's got. Just driving by that house isn't all there is to that house. There's a lot of hard work. In mid-September, we begin assembling the shelves that will hold the pumpkins and erect the wall that will have the orchestra. And then I buy the pumpkins from a farmer who will deliver them to me in crates, in boxes, that hold anywhere from 50 to, if it's a small pumpkin, 75 or 100 pumpkins. And then that's generally the first weekend in October. And for the next three weeks, my daughter and I will be in the backyard drawing the faces. We save notebooks. Each year, we add drawings to the pumpkins and I'll flip through the pages and then transcribe uh, freehand onto the pumpkin and people say well I can't believe you do that freehand and I always tell them we've done over 40,000 pumpkins this year we'll pass I think 50,000 pumpkins and if I can't draw a pumpkin face freehand by now I need to quit and then about five days before CK Autumn Fest we will have the volunteers begin to show up. Kids will scoop the pumpkins what we usually do is have hole saws to cut the bottoms out of the pumpkins, then the kids will scoop them, then they are transported back to the tables with the faces drawn on them for adults to use jigsaws and carve the pumpkins out of the jigsaws. Then we have volunteers who put them into large vats to rinse them. We put a little bit of, of actual bleach in the water in the hopes that that will retard the growth of mold and bacteria. I don't know if it works, but it makes us feel better. But then after they're drawn, we'll drain them and set them out onto the displays all through the yard. The pumpkin wall that uh, goes to the music is, was probably the neatest part of it. This is the women's choir, the men's choir, the titles, and this year over here, I'm going to try to do a puzzle. 
uh, for people to try to solve. But there are 540 pumpkins in the wall and uh, each pumpkin has to be in its precise location so I have to number them and then uh, put Humpty back together again. <laughs> It has 32 circuits, and the 32 circuits each control a sound effect and a light. So when the orchestra uh, is playing, say, the 1812 Overture, the violins will light when the violins play. The violins will go dark. If they're playing softly, the violin section that is drawn will be actually very, very dim in light. And as the volume of the music goes up, the brightness of the light increases. It's fun to watch because it will flash. I had a high school uh, band teacher tell me one time that he brings his band each year to see it so that they can see the music, not just hear it, and try to pick out the instruments as they're playing. And so it's a lot of fun to watch. To me, one of the most enjoyable aspects of it is the volunteers. What a strange phenomenon that I, I get this queasy feeling every year after 3,000 pumpkins are delivered into the backyard and it's quiet and I see all of the work that I know, the thousands of man hours that lie ahead of us and I have this thought, what if it gets cold and rains for two solid weeks while we're doing this? And it's me, 3,000 pumpkins, and no volunteers. What am I going to do? It's never been a problem. We have had rain, we have had cold weather, we have had 90 degree heat, and the good people of our area show up, stand in the rain, stand in the blowing, blustery fall weather, and do everything they can to help us do that. I'm amazed. I estimate six or seven hundred people a year, most of whom I don't even know, just walk into my backyard and out of the kindness of their hearts say, what can I do to help? It's pretty amazing to see the number of volunteers that, that come in and youth groups, uh, groups from Marshall University, church groups, individuals. I mean, it's just unbelievable the number of people that come to help scoop and build and and carve and, and it just, everything has to be done. It takes an army to do it. But I think it's also a learning experience for many of the young people that this hard work is what makes it possible. There's always some interesting stories that you hear there about what this means, not just to children, but to adults too. How it brings that sense of childhood back to even senior adults that they remember. People really enjoy this and take it serious. It's something that our area and our community is proud that we have. And so I think that's something that was totally unintended that we really enjoy. Uh, and a story along those lines too is, why do you do it? Uh, the closest we've come to a good explanation was provided to us by a lady on a walker who slowly made her way up my driveway into the backyard and I was kneeling over a pumpkin, carving the, uh, the design, and I looked up and this woman was standing over me with tears in her eyes, and she said, who owns this house? My first thought was, oh no, a pumpkin's fallen off the roof. I'm gonna get sued because it hit her grandson. And uh, I sheepishly said, I do, and she said, I want to tell you something. As you grow up, you lose the wonderment of childhood. Never again do you feel like you did on Christmas morning or when you got your first bicycle. You don't have that same excitement. But today, I enjoyed this display so much. I had that feeling and I recalled it from my childhood and I just wanted to thank you. Well, I stood up and I started crying and I hugged her and I said, ma'am, that's the sweetest thing anyone's ever said to us about why we do that. We always think of the children, never the enjoyment of the adults. 
But we've had experiences like that that add a dimension we can't measure. The, the massive amount of pumpkins is just unbelievable because we had, we had been here before but we had just driven by and the experience is completely different than walking, you know, than driving by if you walk through. The, the intricacy of the way they carve the pumpkins, it's not just little triangles and a mouth, it's just, you know, it's just amazing how, how the volunteers just put so much into it and, you know, it's, it's almost like it was professionally done. It brings joy to the volunteers, to the community, and as I've said, I don't know how we could stop it now if we wanted to. It's the most unstructured, structured thing in my life. I know what we need to do. I know when we need to do it. I have no idea if there's going to be anybody there to help us. <laughs> you can come to the pumpkin house, scoop, carve, rinse, or remove pumpkins to your heart's delight. We need, we need volunteers, and we need volunteers because it is overwhelming, but it is also a wonderful experience of friendship, fun, jokes, and a lot of questions of why are we doing this? So we would love to have any volunteers we could get. Out of this craziness, a lot of love, a lot of joy has been generated, and the good people of CK Autumn Fest have expanded that into a dimension that we couldn't even have begun to imagine when we started. I think it's turned out to be a really good draw and again it's it's free and the people who carve and scoop and do all those things uh, seem to have a really great time and come back year after year to volunteer. You can contact us at our website www.seekoutandfest.com. Click on the contact us and we'll get back with you. We would love to have more volunteers and we want to invite everyone to come out. Spend a little time with us the last week of October.